Hey guys, welcome to that battle show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. We're just going to have a bit of fun today, Mick. We're going to look at some things uh, that will transform the sound of your guitar into something basically unrecognisable. Which is always a good thing. I, I, awesome I find. thing. Yeah. So the best thing. Dodd has reissued the Gonculator mm. uh, and also the Meat Box, but mm -hmm. we've got the Gonculator. Um, and Electro Harmonics, of course, has recently brought out the C9 and B9 organ simulators. I wanted to show the Pog 2 as well to give you a little bit of idea how the C9 and the B9 work. But anyway, yeah, fun toys to explore. Indeed, and uh, possibly even use. Yes. But lest we get into that. A um, couple of things to mention. We might get some clipping because the, the first thing to know about these kinds of pedals is you're dealing with a vastly expanded frequency, frequency range, range yeah. particularly in the low end. We were, mm -hmm. we were just messing around with it, wondering if it wasn't working properly and the speaker was flapping so badly that... <laughs> so uh, yeah, nicely worn in the cabs now. Yes, yeah. vintage cabs. Right, come on. Okay. I, I'm gonna ask you a question to kick off. All right. What the hell is ring modulation? Aha. A ring modulator is basically, you've got an input signal, okay? And the input signal is mixed with another signal that is generated inside the device um, using an LFO, like an oscillator. Yep. And basically, the sum of those, or the difference of those, um, determines what comes into the output. A really good example of a ring modulator is the Daleks. Yep. Right, that exterminate sound, that is put through a ring modulator. I think that's pretty much what Dodds say about it. It's a reissue of the 90s pedal, except now it's got true bypass and some other things. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much what they say in the first line of their marketing, which is sound like a robot. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, that would make sense then. Okay, so uh, so the, this, the gonculator has a built-in uh, distortion Pedal as well, okay. Now, if we turn on, turn up the ring modulator, it gives us a frequency. Schofield in the room? He is. He is. I'm channeling him right now. So, so what you'll notice about the frequency of the ring modulator is it's not necessarily anything to do with the note that you're playing, mm -hmm. which is why it sounds so... Yeah, if you, if in actual fact, if you put the frequency between notes, mm. that's when you get the, the craziness. It's, yeah, it's great. It's, it's, a, it's an old effect. It's one of the very earliest effects. Mm. Um, it's a really cool sounding thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, mentioning Schofield there, he, so John Schofield, jazz blues guitar player, he uses it, doesn't he? And he's yeah. certainly with some of his more experimental stuff with Avi Bortnik and all that, mm -hmm. you'll hear him doing... You know, it's, 
Gu fun, fun for all the family. Guthrie uses it a lot. Guthrie, or used to use ring rig modulator as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cool. We like it. I like it. Yeah. You great. know, for the otherworldly thing. I'm just reprogramming on the fly. That's what I do. Uh, ably demonstrating how easy is the gig rig G2 is to <laughs> set up there. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? Are you giving me some presets? Yeah, yeah. Can I have a go on you the can. modulator? You can indeed. So, ready? Yep. Go for and it. Just to really bring the best out of this ring modulator, I've got a £4,000 guitar as well. <laughs> wrong notes because every note is wrong. Yeah. How does it handle chords, I wonder? You show me. Actually, we've got another pedal for that in a minute. <laughs> Some right notes will be played today. <sighs> okay, moving on. Right. Shall we... Um, so, it kind of leads us nicely into an older pedal, I think is still available, I don't know, but the Digitech Synthwire, mm. which gives you the sub-synth thing. Yeah, I've been using this for a while. Um, years, actually. There's one particular sound on it. So, by itself, you get this thing. Right? Not brilliant at the uh, polyphonic. No. But what I used to love doing with it is kicking on a fuzz before it. Yep. So, so if I use the ring modulator. So the gonculator has got uh, a fairly fuzzy type distortion in it, so we'll use that for the fuzz. Yeah, yeah. so you get this. I can, I can hear the roto toms. But it's fantastic, mixing that with other pedals. And it's, yeah. Yeah, I've been and using it for It's got loads of years. modes. Do, will, I, will I be freaked out if I change the modes? Ah, no. Well, if I turn the, um, yeah. the gocolator off, so you can Great, it's, you know, and they're not expensive. Who wouldn't want that? Yeah, it's loads of fun. It really is. Funnily enough, first time I ever heard it, I, we were doing some stuff with a little band that had that song, Goodbye Mr. Ray, what were they called? Oh yeah, Goodbye Mr. Ray. Yeah. Uh, Ho the Hoosiers. Hoosiers. The Hoosiers. And they were using our stuff and, and I went and saw them and they, you know, they sounded great, but they had that one sound on, what was that? And yeah. it was that thing. And as we've just found out, you've got to be really careful with your cabs because that's bass frequency that doesn't come out of a guitar and pour a guitar. So no. you should hear that into an AC30 that's cranked. Yeah. <laughs> and I can wrong. imagine, you know, at gig volume and it's going through the PA and all of a sudden he kicks that on and the guy out the front's like, ah! Yeah. No, but yeah, very groovy. So talking of fun. Talking of fun. These, so I've seen some demos of these online. Right. And 
you know, if you want to see in-depth demos of every single mode, electroharmonics are going to be the best source of that. Of but let's so B9 and C9, mm -hmm. right? Yep, two different organs. Yep, or types of organ well, family. Yeah, well, the C9 has a lot more keyboard type sounds in it. The yep. B9 is basically you know pure organs. Yeah, um, but you know it sounds great. Is it? So have a go. Is that the B9? That is the B9. Yeah? Yeah. And it does poly... It's doing something, it's got something very gated going on there. So, you've got, if you, the amount, the way that you attack the note, and it does the click of the organ. And, and sustain. And sustain, it's crazy. Voicings. Yeah, yeah, so you Good. can only play tight chords, right? Well, um, no, not necessarily. Doing interesting things with, with um, octaves there. <laughs> Dearly beloved. So, bell organ, what's that? Ah. Every 70s and 80s telly show right there. Okay, what else have we got? Classic rock, I want to hear number four. Strangest mix of classical it's, guitar and organ I've ever heard. It's very strange. Okay, let's move on to the C9. So this one is presumably just a different set of sounds, is it? Yeah, 
Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> See, that's spooky. That's really quite right. So what I've you done there, I've mixed the dry guitar out completely. Ah, there you go. Weird. <laughs> Weird. Uh, let's Lord Purple. I think I know what that might sound like. to you and you're going to start using one in your band I'm just going to say again just beware of that frequency because that's it's so radically different from what you get out of a guitar of course and it's going to be quite tough to mix I think but let's not get too bored um, and move on <laughs> let's not get bored with practicalities uh, the Telstar one I liked so that was the yeah, fame you, you, do you know it I don't know the tune how does it go it was kind of like um Sorry, I don't know the I don't know the melody, but Price of admission alone. This is where your um, finger exercises sound good as, as uh, music. <laughs> Enough of that. Right, move on. Here in the Bat Cave. <laughs> oh, God, tone wheel. <laughs> It's, so, uh, honestly, it's it's a lot of fun. I, you're you're going to be hard pressed, I think, using this once, twice at a okay, push. Okay, all right. I'm going to give you another example. Then let's go back onto the uh, B9, and let's just go for the fat and full sound, which is the one I think you heard at the beginning. Yep. Was it? Yep. Was it? So, well, well, switch me on. Switch me on. I'm going to turn the. the Dry the dry up and the guitar down. Wow. So. so let's say you're you're in a band and there's two two of you in the band and yep. one plays, you know, and you you you're playing an R and B song, you know, why not? Bit bit more organ. <laughs> transient thing is really weird. Oh, click, there you go. Turn the click down.
Now I sound like a hockey game. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to find it. I think no, no. it would work. I remember years ago seeing this guy, amazing guitar player, and it's sort of, it was in the mid 90s and he was really into his guitar synth stuff. And he played probably an hour set using all keyboards and organ sounds from his synth. And he was amazing. But this, I, I found the sound so distracting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so all I would say is they are fantastic, and I do use sounds like that. And I'm, I actually show what I, with the Pog Two. That's how I make my organ sounds. But I'll use, like a, as a spot effect. Yeah, you know. of course. But they are so much fun. You could literally sit down with that sort of stuff because you play differently as well. Oh yeah. You know. Um, well, in my case, you play like really badly. <laughs> But it's just, it's fun. When you, well, the way the organ would just play over a G chord. Yeah. It's nice how it de deals with the glissando and everything. It's amazing. And it's, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, okay, so the the one that probably everyone's going to recognise more than any other is the Pog. Yeah. Because Remember when it first came out, it was in that metal chassis, mm -hmm. the original Pog, and then it changed, and now it's the Pog 2. So, how do you use this then? Right, so. Because it's, it's doing a similar thing, isn't it? The, it is. It absolutely is. It's a similar engine they're using mm. to create the sounds so that's in the Pog. So, what do the controls do? Right, so we have our dry output here. So, just stand this up. We have the two octaves below. We have one octave below. We have one octave above. We have two octaves above. So you can already start to hear yeah. those frequencies. Right, so an organ. You know the draw bars? Yeah, yeah. They have, so the, the draw bars is what's cr gives you giving you all those extra octaves and things. Actually, if you look on a frequency sheet of all the instruments and where the, all the instruments sit in the spectrum, uh, a pipe organ is the largest spectrum yep. instrument there is. And it, right. it, it goes from the sub, crazy subs, right up to crazy highs. It covers basically everything. So we have a mixture of five notes there over a four octave range, yep. Then we change the attack of the, the um, so if I push the attack up. So you feel the attack coming in slower or faster, yep. yeah. Then there's a low pass filter. So as I move the slider down, it's only frequencies below those frequencies that allowed to pass. And then we have a detune here. So ah, that's because I remember from the original Pog it had detunes on each octave. Right. Or a couple, mm -hmm. anyway. do have to think like a keyboard player. Absolutely. Which is somewhat impossible for me, but... So if we, if we compare that now to the B9... So the B9 also has those clicks in it as yep. well. Um, but the Pog is a 
It's, it's fantastic and you know that you can save presets um, with the pog so for example if we go back to that sound and we just want to give you a, a sort of rock thing so we take out the upper octaves just, just yeah give you just a little bit of some upper octaves. What happens if you hit uh, that with a ring modulator, just out of interest? You get this. Come up with parts and sounds and things. Just having some fun. I'm having fun. Yeah, it's it's great. It's a really great way to do it. And you know, trying out different combinations. One thing I do is I stick a nice slow phaser at the beginning with an overdrive pedal, and a slow phaser and a short delay at the end of the pog too. Yeah. And it just yeah sounds ace. Well, I'm not sure what we've learned, but. There we are, guitar sounds that aren't really guitar sounds. Yeah. Messing around with frequencies in the context of the new Gonculator and also the Electro Harmonics B and C9 pedals. Mm. Loads of fun. Yeah, I'd have, uh, I definitely would have one of those EHX ones. The C9 or B9? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and get kicked out of every. <laughs> um... Yeah. Well, I get, see, I get everything on the air of the pot too, but because I use. A couple of different presets. So I, I have one preset with just an octave, and another preset that's completely organ tastic, yeah. um, and it's really handy. It's, so you remember the old, the original Pogs, and they're yeah. huge, and yeah. and these are great, and they're small and easier to power, and all that stuff. But yeah, I think uh, Electro Harmonics do a great job of these sort of pedals. That polyphonic, loads of fun. It's their world, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, it's really great. Cool. Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys, and got something out of it. And uh, we will see you next Friday. See Cheers, guys. Bye.